I am Brigadier General Laura Clellan, the Adjutant General for Colorado. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my career and how it started off and how I got here today. Uh, commissioned out of a small college in Ohio called Rio Grande. I went on active duty for three years. I uh, deployed three times during that three years. The deployments included a, a pretty primitive deployment to Honduras, JTF Bravo, where we did a lot of convoys and security. Then went to Desert Storm, and that was pretty primitive as well. We came back from Desert Storm and went to Panama and supported operations down in Panama. At that time, I decided I was going to get out. I had a great time on active duty. I just wasn't really able to, to be congruent and to be my authentic self, and I knew that, and so I made a decision to stop active duty. And I started teaching middle school up here, and I was contacted by the reserves. And I thought, I missed, I missed being in the uniform. I missed the people most of all. So I thought, you know, it might be easier for me to, to be in the reserves and be part-time. So I joined the reserves here in Denver and, uh, and eventually made my way into the guard. I happened to come across the lieutenant colonel as I was working at a track meet. He offered me a position uh, with the 220th Military Police Company. This was in 1998. As soon as I took command, we got notified we were deploying operations in Hungary and Croatia. Uh, great deployment. I met uh, some of the best soldiers that I've ever worked with in my whole career, and many of them are still serving. And, uh, you know, we had a really successful deployment, and I came back and uh, General Crowder at the time offered me a position to work for him full-time, so I worked full-time doing strategic planning and quality management for about four years. Then I went and taught ROTC at Boulder. And many of them I'm still serving with here in the Colorado National Guard. After that, took command of the 193rd MP Battalion. We were notified of deployment as well to Afghanistan. I deployed with many of the folks that I deployed with in 1999 from Hungary. I deployed with many of them and some others. And we ran the detention facility in Bagram. Great deployment. And again, it was all about the people that I served with, the team that we had at the time. Um, outstanding and many of them are still serving uh, many of them are some of our leaders in the organization and really that's that's what this job is about it's about making an organization better and it's about uh, serving the people who really make up our organization you know i never expected to be in this position you know i think sometimes luck is about preparation and timing many of you know i retired in 2019 after serving as land component commander and the Assistant Adjutant General for the Army. I had a great career, and when I retired, I really thought that that was it for me. I can tell you I missed the people um, when I was retired for the few months that I, I spent not drilling, but I think anyone can, can find themselves in a leadership position at any level in the organization. If you take the hard jobs, if you build relationships, and if you really truly care about people as a leader. I'm humbled and I'm very honored to be in this position. I spent most of my career being traditional, and I know the sacrifice that uh, our soldiers and airmen make as traditional guardsmen and women. I know that it's very difficult to balance and try to balance, you know, having a full-time job and being in this career. You can't do it without the support of your family. I would not have been able to be in senior leadership positions without the support of my wife, Stephanie Harding, who has been with me the last 10 plus years, supporting me and really helping me be able to do this job. And she takes care of a lot of the stuff at the house that I can't take care of. She supports everything that I do. And, and she truly cares about the organization as well. I never expected the military to open itself up to the LGBTQ community. So in 2012, when that happened, when Don't Ask, Don't Tell was lifted, I was surprised. It was very difficult to to be out, and I had a wise mentor tell me that it wasn't a choice, that I needed to do that, to lead by example. After spending so much time, you know, not being able to be out, it was difficult at first. But I think Pride Month is about being able to be who you are, no matter who you are. You know, and I talk about leveraging our diversity and being an inclusive organization, that really, Pride Month is about that. It's about being inclusive to everyone and being proud to be who you are because who you are as an individual is what makes us strong as an organization.